Hi everyone, it's Jackie schomburg Um uh, Several of you have asked for a Jackie's Favorite Supplies video. So this is the first one. It's your lucky day. <laughs> uh, I use a bunch of supplies. I like to experiment with different materials and different media. So these are the supplies that I cannot do without. So these might seem super basic, but these are my favorite, best of the best, um, supplies that I that I have starting with my best friends these are my Fiskars scissors they are it's called easy action scissors this is a special like arthritis um, scissor so you don't have to use your thumb so you just pull with your fingers on the bottom and they lock into place if I use this little switch here mine don't really stay closed but that's okay I use them enough that I don't need to and they are covered with uh, gloss medium and everything else that I use to cut into them. But I, my thumbs hurt all the time. I just have bad arthritis. So these are lifesavers. So if you want to be kind to your hands or if your hands hurt when you're making collage and you're cutting papers <clears throat> and it makes you want to not do it, invest in these. I will put a link in the description. I cannot recommend them more highly. In fact, I've lost them for a while, slash my kids maybe helped me lose them for a while. And I was gonna buy a second pair thinking, well, then I'll just have two, that'll be great. I can always find one. But luckily they were returned <laughs> uh, in time before I needed to buy them. So, Biskers, scissors, epic for sore thumbs and tired hands, okay? That's number one. Uh, item number two, this will not be a surprise to you if you've seen my other videos, color shapers. These things are one of my most used items, especially, believe it or not, for collage. I use these instead of a brush or my hands to seal in and glue down collage papers for my collages. The benefit is it's kind of like, it's basically a paintbrush with a silicone tip. So it's a bit like a squeegee and you can nicely move the media around to seal in the paper and, you know, then pick up all the remaining extra media. Then to clean them, this is my favorite part, you guys, this goes for paint too. Baby wipe, wipe it off. That's it, and you put it away. There's no need for them to be sitting in, in water. Um, if for some reason, even if you leave it out forever, let's see if I have any that are goopy. Yeah, so this one you can't really tell, but there's a, you can see the shine, that's all my gloss medium. And then you can just peel it off, which is more satisfying even than wiping it with a baby wipe. So, cannot recommend these highly enough. They make some fun, kind of grungy marks on paper and canvas. You can put it on thick and then it's kind of like these big thick marks. I love it. Um, let me see if I have something handy. So like this, this white mark here or light blue mark that was made with the color shaper. Um, this is a brush. So you can see here, can you see that? The brush strokes here, no brush strokes here, except that it's on top of some paintbrush. Um, and it kind of, you can kind of get it to leave some really soft edges that look kind of grungy and really organic. Okay, they also come in many sizes. This one is a three inch brush. So the top is three inches wide. This is a two inch brush. Oh, this is a two and a half inch brush. I lied. Two inches inch and a half and my little one inch guy. So they all make similar marks for different size art. And again, the reason that I got these was because they're so easy to clean up. So easy, even though I still don't clean them up regularly, but again, I can peel that off. So if you haven't used these, give them a try. They are different than brushes. They will not give you you know, brush strokes. They'll give you color shaper strokes, which are very smooth in the middle. And you can take them, load them up, and then just kind of make some big marks and 
see if you like those marks or not, but I'm a big fan of these. Again, especially for collage, these are lifesavers. I would never do collage if I had to wash the brushes every time, full of glue. Plus, then it leaves brush strokes. I don't happen to like brush strokes on top of my collage papers. This will leave a nice clean top without brush strokes. And again, they're just so easy to clean. I never clean my brushes. It's not something I'm proud of. I just don't do it. But these can always be clean. And if you forget and leave a bunch on it, you just peel it off. Okay, I've made my point about that. <clears throat> Let's talk about sketchbooks. Sketchbooks, I like to use mixed media paper. These are hardcover, Canson 9 by 12 inch notebooks. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. I will leave you the link below. The price fluctuates wildly. I've purchased them for $26. I've purchased them for $14. I think the days of the 14 are over. That was a couple years ago. But now I've gotten them as low as $18 up to $26. So kind of ride the wave. The paper inside, there's a perforated edge so you can tear them out cleanly. This is a full one I have. Um, so I write on, I draw on both sides, paint on both sides of the paper, and then I just put some wax paper in here. The paper is nice. It's thick enough that it really absorbs the water from anything. And because it's hardcover, at least I credit the hardcover with this. When I put the book down and close it up, if I put something on top of it, all the pages flatten out anyway. So even if something does, you know, buckle a bit, I can still get it flat again because of this book. So I have a ton of these. I think I have 12 of these. Okay, half of them have been used, half of them are brand new because I buy them whenever the price goes down. So keep an eye out for those. I'll put that link in the bottom as well. Um, Neocolor crayons. These are Neocolor 2 crayons. The 2 is down here. This just means they're water soluble. So if you want to add some color and then kind of blend it in with your paint after you're done painting and the paint is dry, that's key, then you can use these. This is my mess of them. They come in a nice little tin, which is great for travel too. Spoiler alert, epic <laughs> for travel because they don't all get banged up and bruised and broken. Uh, if you just push hard, then you will break them like I do. But they're really nice color. They're really satisfying to use. They're much more satisfying and buttery than like Crayola crayons. And these, if you use a paintbrush or you take even clear matte medium or clear gloss medium and paint with them, then it becomes a little bit more of a watercolory, transparent, translucent colors. The Neocolor One crayons I also use a lot. They're the same company, same everything, but they are not water soluble. So again, if you want to have the mark uh, underneath paint or on top of paint that's not gonna smear if anything else gets on top of it, then you'll like the Neocolor One crayons. The other thing I get asked about a lot is that I store my paint and my gloss medium in these containers that are condiment squeeze bottles, like for ketchup and mustard. Um, I love them. Again, with my arthritis, it helps a lot that I don't have to continue opening up jars and closing jars all the time. This works best with like a thinner medium. Um, sorry, picking off the edge. Uh, a thin medium, like fluid paint, it would work well with. It flows out really easily. What I do, so this is, a, this is an eight ounce bottle. This is a 16 ounce bottle. I put a marble in the bottom. Okay, so then when you go to shake it, especially if you're blending colors in these, then it shakes all the color around and it helps to mix the colors better. I didn't do that the first time and I can still see different colors on the outside of the paint, of the paint container. Okay, again, eight ounce, 16 ounce. They're, you know, one's thinner on the bottom all the way through. What else do I have? Oh, my last thing for this list, knitting needles. I don't knit, I don't know how to knit. I would love to, 
but I don't pay attention to things like counting numbers, so I'm not sure I'd be very good at it. I use these to scratch into one layer of paint to reveal the color underneath. So if you've ever seen any of my paintings where there's maybe um, a layer of black and then there's some, you know, writing or faux writing in that, and you can see like red popping up underneath, that's what I've used. So you can get any size you want. I ordered these online not knowing what I was getting. This one's a bit thicker, but at the point, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Okay, these are a little thinner. They're a little bit thinner on the tip, but, and so let's see, this is a, this is a nine millimeter US 13. Don't know what that means. And this little purple guy is a six US four millimeter. Don't know what that means. Uh, I assume it's the thickness of the needle itself for different stitches, but for my purposes, I don't use stitches. It's just for carving into paint. Okay, but it's nice because it doesn't tear the paper. It's rounded enough on the top that it won't tear through my paper. And they're easy to hold. They're easy to find because they stick up higher than my pencils. And what else? I don't know, I just like them. They're also easy to clean, even though I don't always clean them. You can always just wipe them off. Okay, so what other supplies would you like to hear about? Uh, and what other supplies can I demo for you in my videos? Please let me know in the comments. I am happy to share. Uh, and I will also link to a website that I'm still building, but it's there's a lot of stuff on there already that has all my favorite supplies and links to those, as well as my favorite books. Okay, so my creative books that I really, really always go back to. Thank you, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful summer, and I'll talk to you soon.